Quickly uh, jumping into this conversation, I think I will start with the the the, 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 uh, the uh, I'll start with with PO8. Talk to us about uh, this partnership, uh, the agreement that you signed, one million dollars. What does it entail? Well, I think what what we see and experience in here is when one door meets another door, there's always going to be expansion. So this is a door that is opening up the African market as a whole to invest in a security token offer. P08 is the first security token offer outside, out of the Caribbean. Um, and that will allow people to own a part of this mission, this journey, as we expand to Africa, uh, both Kenya and South Africa. And uh, John and CryptoVest, we think, uh, represents the future of what can be accomplished when two countries come together. And I think that this is going to be probably you're going to see this model replicated and duplicated several times over, not just for companies expanding to Africa, but African developed products going out to the world to also raise capital. Right. Uh, John, uh, speak to me more about this uh, announcement that you made. What uh, advised you to actually partner with uh, uh, PO8? Uh, why not somebody else but PO8 specifically? Well, uh, thank you very much, Michael. And, and first of all, a number of things. So um, w w we've been in this space. Uh, allow me to introduce a little bit about what we're doing uh, for the last two years uh, in the space of blockchain. So we established CryptoVex Capital as a means to uh, educate the masses, first of all, about all blockchain uh, opportunities and crypto assets. Uh, talk about alternative investment opportunities for people, even the layman in the street, to be able to uh, grab an opportunity and, and invest in this space. It, it's, an, it's a phenomenal way to be able to transfer wealth uh, to ourselves if we know exactly what we're doing and, and eventually also provide a little bit of an education platform for people to learn uh, everything uh, that's happening in this space. Now, why pure weight? Um, first of all, CryptoVex Capital has been looking for partners around the world uh, to be able to associate themselves with, uh, particularly those who are uh, regulated uh, in, in, in that particular jurisdiction and to be quite honest in Africa there is none, no jurisdiction at, at this moment that's currently regulating the aspect of, uh, of blockchain and so forth. We know that uh, the South African, uh, uh, the SARS is, is currently you know providing certain opinions about what could be happening in this space and waiting for the public to provide exactly what they can actually do in that space but we're still very far away from from endorsing fully uh, the means of raising capital in a, in a friendly regulatory environment within South Africa. So nobody is currently doing it in, uh, uh, in Africa for that matter. And we know that in the States as well, it's currently ongoing talks. Uh, the SEC, the Securities Exchange Control, is very tough. And there, uh, we saw what happened in 20 th 2018 uh, with the misuse of the ICO market that boomed in 2017, making a lot of people a lot of money but also causing so many other uh, uninformed investors to really lose a lot of money. Uh, we saw that 2018 was the year of sort of engaging in regulatory conversation. So the SEC took that stance and we saw around the world a friendlier jurisdiction like the Bahamas. Uh, we saw Malta, we saw Dubai, we saw Gibraltar, we saw, we saw if a few other jurisdictions out there that are currently taking the first step towards implementing those, those, those laws. So the Bahamas is currently one of the first, uh, I would say, in the world, yes, correct me if I'm wrong, correct. one of the first in the world to implement a friendlier regulatory framework that would actually look into securities token exchange. And that's the one thing that gives us right. an opportunity uh, to bring that, uh, to form this partnership and allow everybody in Africa to be able to, be able to partake in this, uh, in this, in this journey. John, allow me to bring uh, Matthew back into this conversation because I want to understand uh, with in-depth, of course, there on the NFT, the non-fungible yes. token. Yes. How does it work? Because we've uh, definitely seen a lot of our blockchain technology companies coming up and saying, okay, we are putting this on the market, but there is little to no understanding uh, when it comes to ask about the households, the population. How do people get to even understand how all of this works? So just break it down for me. The NFT, how does it work and how is it supposed to uh, help conserve the underwater uh, artifacts for Africa? Speak to me about that. So I want you to imagine this non-fungible token basically represents the other side 
of uh, cryptocurrency, so to speak, or like I like to say, a secure store of value. So this cannot be swapped because each token has a different underlying asset. For us, it's going to start with a store of value of artifacts. And then we believe that those non-fungible tokens means that, look, it, it's not going to be very volatile. They're not going to be massive jumps. It's not going to be like Bitcoin or Ethereum. So we are living a bit in the future, but people now have a chance to own a part of that future. So those artifacts that we find all over the world, be it in the Bahamas, be it in Kenya, be it in, off the Cape of South Africa, those artifacts will be preserved, put in a museum where you can have secondary interest from tourism, historical tourism. So you have people coming to view an artifact in its, in its regular state, in an augmented way, in a virtual reality way. But then you can also have people that can own that artifact through a non-fungible token. So that ownership can be anywhere in the world. And then they can have that as an investment. So think of non-fungible tokens also as not just secure store of values, but new, a new investment class, just like you would invest in a bond or you would invest in an equity, you can now invest in secure stores of value like art. Think about the art world. The art world is a great investment and a lot of people, it's kind of out of reach for the general population. So we're making it, uh, we're decentralizing it, we're democratizing it so people can be able to invest in art. They'll be able to invest in these artifacts and then use those as secure stores of value. So people don't have to worry about the volatility. They don't have to worry about, oh, I went to sleep and, and my Bitcoin was this price, now it's that price. This is a secure store of value that I really believe is going to open up a completely new era of how people invest and how people make money and how people transact in between uh, each other for goods, for services, and how they collateralize their assets and bring liquidity to illiquid assets. John, are you seeing a point where we see the PO8 model being reproduced in Africa, on the Abs continent? Absolutely. And, and, and b before I answer that, if, if I can actually interject and add a, a couple more thoughts into that, um, you right. know, f let's think about it this way in the world of investing, right? So previously, the capital market seemed or has seemed to only be uh, uh, provided to a, a, a very, you know, privileged few. And um, so what we, what we are seeing with the blockchain era is that it is opening up to the world and anybody around the world has an opportunity to invest in, in assets uh, that aren't necessarily within their jurisdiction. So look, when we look into the, the success, for example, of, of Facebook and, and a few other companies out there, uh, many people, only qualified investors were allowed to invest in the US. And yet, Facebook is a, a phenomenal investment opportunity for a lot of people around the world. Now, imagine that that particular company were to go in the route of setting up a whole STO model, uh, allowing them to be able to tokenize their business and giving every single person, every lame person on the street, the opportunity to invest uh, in Facebook through holding those tokens. Wherever they are, they are in the world, this is a phenomenal investment opportunity for these people. So we're seeing that Facebook today is valued at what, uh, roughly uh, just over $400 billion. And uh, we similarly, we see, for example, Uber as well, that has recently filed for an IPO that, if everything goes well, would go in September uh, uh, you know, on, on, the, on the various exchanges. And what do we see there? That the folks who actually invested earlier on on Uber in 2010 are the people who will see multiples in return of their capital that they invested previously. What we are doing right now in the, with the STO model and with PO8 is first of all leveraging on existing assets because that's the underlying, the underlying uh, 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 value there. So those artifacts will and, and, and the business model around it, everything that will be able to generate more revenue, not only in the Bahamas, we can also replicate, as to ask your question just now, we can replicate that model within South Africa, Kenya, uh, Mozambique, uh, uh, Tanzania, and all these other regions where there is sort of lost uh, treasures that we can certainly implement services to go and recover. Those only over time will improve and inc uh, uh, the value of this actual underlying token. So in, and essentially, 18 months from now or 24 months from now, when the token becomes tradable, I mean, these folks, whoever, depending on your personal investment appetite and, and, and knowledge, depending on what you want to do, you, you would be able to either hold them off for long or buy more token or even trade them on the exchange. But yet the idea is you are investing early on on an opportunity that has 
uh, 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 the potential to give you multiples in the next two, three, four, five years uh, uh, as we go ahead and implement it pretty well. So yes, definitely. Uh, du duplicating the pure weight model from the Bahamas in South Africa is definitely something that can be done, not right. only in South Africa, but also in Kenya and other regions across Africa. John and Matthew, thank you very much for getting time to speak to CNBC Africa.